Hey, Dan here, and this video is an Ask Dan from an INFP, and I'm gonna read the question, we're gonna deal with that, and then get into a wealth of topics surrounding it in terms of fear and limiting beliefs about what we can actually get paid for, or your ability to follow through and create your dream business or career. So here it is. Hi Dan, my limiting belief is that I will never get my coaching business off the ground because I keep taking more classes, fidgeting with my website, offering free workshops to get experience, etc., etc. So basically, uh, doing anything you can that is not getting paid for your work. Awesome. Discovering recently that I'm an INFP has given me lots of insight into how my personality relates to my stuckness. I love your other INFP videos and wonder if you might do one addressing the limiting beliefs that often accompany that type. Thanks for all your useful info you offer. Cool. Uh, yes, this is something that not only affects INFPs, I would definitely say it comes up a lot with my ENFP coaching clients as well and probably most human beings ever. So this is not just an issue about a certain type. What's really going on here is fear. Fear is a bastard. Fear is the thing that comes in and stops us from doing what we want to do. But it acts in really subtle ways, right? So doing the consistent education, which a lot of people do, whether it's becoming a coach and taking a thousand training programs before you actually start coaching, or doing a master's degree, then a PhD degree, then a second PhD degree, because you want to avoid sort of the real world, uh, this is all ultimately coming down to fear. And that fear ultimately comes down to beliefs about how good you are, what you deserve, and what you can succeed in. And I know I'm getting very therapist here, right? And I, I don't like to go there, but that's ultimately what is happening here. And we often have these beliefs around what we deserve to be paid or what we can be paid for. Uh, last night we had a group coaching call for the Free Freelancer, which is my training program for coaches and freelancers. And we were talking about this aspect where if someone is a really fun client or they're a really good client where you just enjoy working with them, often the people have a tendency to charge that person less because it feels weird to get paid really well for work that you're going to enjoy, right? This probably is some Puritan thing or derived from some other religion, right? Where we have these beliefs like, we must suffer, life has to be hard. If it was easy, then that would be messed up, right? It has to be tough. And so we have these beliefs about like, if I enjoy my work, then I shouldn't get paid for it. And that's, of course, garbage, right? Because if you enjoy what you're doing and you're working with clients that are um, on the same wavelength as you, that energize you, that you can give a lot of value to, guess what? You're actually helping them a lot more than if you were doing something you didn't like or that you hated, de-energized you, procrastinated, all those sorts of things. So. Our, our belief system often is we should get paid more for the things we don't like doing because we don't like doing them, which there's some logic there. The problem is when we don't enjoy something, then that means we probably don't do it very well. And that means we shouldn't get paid that well. On the other hand, if we really enjoy something, if we're really able to help our clients, and I would use my work as an example of this, where I only work with clients that I... I enjoy working with that I believe in because I don't want to help people I don't believe in as well in terms of their goals or their, what they're trying to do. And because of that, I'm able to deliver a lot of value to my clients because I really believe in them, right? And I get behind them and I want them to succeed. And so I should charge less for that? That doesn't make sense, or at least it's not going to apply to my pricing anytime soon, right? And so going back to about coaching and your limiting beliefs there, ultimately what's happening if you're failing to pull the trigger at something is you're scared you could fail. And yeah, failing sucks. I've done it. Um, it's often the best thing we can ever have happen to us, but in the moment it sucks and it's scary. And the weird thing is, people will often try to do something else that they're not that passionate about because they don't care if they fail. And so I had this discussion with someone recently where they had a very clear dream business, the freelancing profession they wanted to do. It was 
apparent from 30 seconds into talking about the, talking with them that they knew this is what they wanted to do and it was very clear to me. But they wanted to start off doing a totally different freelancing business to sort of learn about freelancing because, and this is when we got below the surface what was going on, because they were afraid if they started off with their dream business, this thing, the thing they were passionate about and wanted to do, then they were afraid that if that failed, what the hell do I do with my life? Like I failed at my dream. Whereas if they try this other thing they don't really care about, where they think they could make some money, then, well, whatever. If I fail, I'll try some other thing I don't care about. And then one day, one day in the distant future, I might try my dream. That's stupid. Don't do that. I'm going to tell you the same thing I told him. Don't do that. That is dumb. And uh, it is dumb, and yet it is natural, and it is instinct, instinctful, instinctual, instinctual. Uh, I've been talking too much the last few days and teaching. My tongue's not even working well here. No jokes about that. And uh, so it, it doesn't make sense to do this, right? Even though this is what a lot of us do. I've done this, where I probably knew that what I do now, I am some level knew it's what I wanted to do six or seven years ago, at least. You can find videos of me on YouTube five years ago, maybe, when I started in Costa Rica, kind of talking about similar topics and having this passion. Three years before that, I actually started my coaching training. I wanted to become a coach, but then I started some like uh, personal development newspaper because it was a way to sort of do coaching without being a coach because I felt insecure that I shouldn't be a coach yet. Now, there's probably some reality of that. When I was 23, 24, I don't think I had the life experience, perhaps, to be a coach and, and that. But ultimately, I knew what I wanted to do, and I took this really long zigzag path because fear and insecurities were essentially like oh, there, but working under the surface. So I never said to myself, you know, Dan, like, you can't be a coach yet. You're too young. Instead, do all these other things. But it was there sort of in the back of my mind and it was uh, clouding my judgment perhaps and changing what I was doing. So what do you do about this? Good question. I'm not going to leave you hanging here. So if you find yourself in this position where really you know what you want to do, what that dream gig is for you, and you're putting it off, you're doing this education cycle where you're taking course after course after course, but you're not actually getting anywhere. By the way, little self-plug here, my course, The Free Freelancer, is all about doing and taking action and accountability. So you should still take that. So if you are in this position where you're constantly taking programs or educating or doing free work rather than charging people, you got to set a deadline for yourself and have a hard deadline that you cannot get around uh, or just do it today. Like if you want to be a freelance writer and you've been wanting to do this for a long time, go on Facebook right now, well, at the end of the video, and make an announcement that this is what you're doing and just start doing it, commit to it. Um, I'll link to a couple articles on my website here about using this technique to quit a job um, in advance. So I wanted to quit, but I wasn't ready to quit. So I set up the system that would force me to quit like four months later so I couldn't BS myself and get a get around it and uh, I go through what I did. It's pretty interesting. I was way smarter back then. And, uh, and also the same thing, how I started my freelance copywriting business in a matter of days after deciding. And it's all about hard decisions, not these soft decisions like, oh, I kind of want to do this. I'll see. Maybe one day we'll see what happens. A hard decision is something you can't turn back from, right? It's a contract with yourself and with the world where you commit to something. And I've used this in so many cases that works really well because once you commit and really commit to something, you will change and you will make what has to happen, happen. And uh, I've done this with YouTube videos as well, where I said, I'm going to film videos three days a week. I did that for a while. Um, I committed to it for three months. And when I committed to it, I was like, how am I going to come up with three videos a week? But once you commit to it, your brain finds a way. You are smarter and more resourceful than you ever think you are. And so what you want to do is commit to that outcome. If you're wanting to become a coach, uh, set that deadline. Say, I'm not taking any more education. I am going to only work with paid clients. 
and set that deadline for yourself. Maybe it's a month from now, maybe it's today. Uh, in the case of the uh, viewer who wrote in, um, make it today. You have the training, you've been working with people for free. Commit today to no longer do work for free and only take on paid coaching clients and start making that happen. Make that firm commitment. Personally, I find the best way to do this is announcements publicly where you will, Facebook is obviously the best way to do this, but you can do it with friends privately where you commit. For me, um, hypocrisy is one of the worst things. I hate people who say one thing and do another. And so I hate myself when I do that. And so publicly committing is very valuable for me. It doesn't always work. Um, case in point, my uh, still in progress book, which has yet to be published, which I may have committed to having finished already, but generally uh, the public accountability works really well. So I would encourage you to make that commitment and just make a hard change with it. I'd also encourage you to face down those fears and really play through that exercise. And you can do that with a coach, you can do it with a friend, or if you're up for it, you can also do it alone. Look at, in this case, right, of becoming a coach, look at the, the up and the, the uh, pros and cons, up and the downside. The pros and cons where you look on one side and say, okay, if I do this, if I commit to following through on my dream, what is the best case scenario? Probably it's pretty awesome, okay? I can tell you as someone who's in many ways living history, it's pretty awesome, okay? So the plus side is probably a 10 or 11 or a 12 out of 10 if you commit to going forward with your dream, facing your fear and doing it. If it works out, it will be awesome. If it doesn't work out, what is that worst case scenario? Okay, right now you've taken all these coaching cl classes. You've been working for free for people. If you commit to getting paid for it, the absolute worst case is you're not getting paid for coaching because you don't get any clients. Cool, that's exactly where you are right now. So it's not going to make a huge difference, right? And maybe you'll have some disappointment. Maybe you'll be questioning things about your life, right? Am I really meant to be a coach? I, I failed, I didn't get clients or that sort of thing. One of two things is true there. You either need better strategies and hopefully my videos, my business videos on this channel can help you there, but you need better strategies, you need a better approach or you need to just keep going, things take a while. That could be one case. The other case is maybe it's not actually the right fit for you. Whatever that dream is, you might realize that um, you, you want to do it, but it's not actually what you're meant to be doing. And if that is the case, and it's happened to me before where I've thought one thing was the direction and then kind of realized it wasn't, that is a blessing. And the sooner you can figure out that what you thought was going to be your dream isn't actually your dream, the sooner you can uncover what your real dream actually is and get to the core of that. And that is so much more valuable, right? You don't wanna be this person, and if you are this, this person, I apologize and I wanna help you as well, you don't want to be this person who's 50 or 60 and you've been not doing what you should be doing with your life because you've been thinking you have this you know, dream and one day maybe you'll do it. And then uh, not only have you put off maybe 20 years of doing this dream, but when you do do it, you realize that's not even what you wanted and you're, you're back to square one. And um, of course, if that's where you're at now, awesome, today's the day, to, the day to change, right? And um, I've worked with clients who've made this change and they've got awesome results. And it, like, so use no time too late, right? You can make that change, but why wait for all that time to pass, right? If you're knowing deep down what you wanna do, start doing it now. If it's not the right thing, again, you'll figure it out, you'll find the right thing. Try, fail, try, fail, try, fail, keep going. Every time you try something and you fail, you learn something about yourself. One, what you're not good at. Two, probably about some of your weaknesses. And three, you narrow down what that actual final goal for you is, right? What that, I shouldn't say goal, but what that ultimate calling for you is. So keep up this process. Don't quit after a couple weeks, but if you go at something for a year and you uh, talk to a few advisors or mentors or coaches or whatever, and, and you get the feedback like, yeah, this might not be the right fit, it's only a year of your life. You've got a lot more. We're all going to live to be like 200 now with all this crazy 
science that's happening. So you got at least 160 more years or so to go. Ballpark, plus or minus 40. And so just keep going. Try out different things. But if you don't do, you will never learn. Learning about something and doing something are totally different. And if you're sitting on the sidelines, you're building up this fantasy world for yourself about what it could be, what that dream you know, will be like, and that might not be the reality. So the sooner you can jump into that dream that you can do it, the sooner you can either make it happen and be living your dream and awesome, or realize it's not the right fit for you and awesome. You can figure out what is the right fit and then work towards that. And then, oh, you've got your real dream. Awesome. You've achieved it. So that's it. Thank you for putting up with me. If you are um, interested in more personality training, I do have a free email course that I'll make sure to link to in this pop-up thing, maybe there, that goes up one of these cards and in the description below. It's just a five-part email training that I have. Uh, traditionally, it's only been for readers of my book, but I'll link to it anyhow so you get it as a bit of a bonus. And it's just a training on how to apply your personality type and knowledge of yourself to actually move forward and make your dream happen. And I also have another free training. I do a lot of writing and free trainings, as you can imagine, um, all called the Life Design Approach. And that you find right on my website, dreamsaroundtheworld.com. Something will be there, you know, get the Life Design Approach or one of those pop-up things. And uh, that is all about designing your life around you, about taking action, about making your dreams come true. And it also contains some scandalous sex stories and other adventures from my travel. So I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks for watching. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you in another video soon. Have an awesome day. And again, don't forget about those dreams. Take some action today uh, towards what it is you actually want for your life. Ciao.